Hello everyone and welcome to what is, I suppose, season three of the Scots Way Hey podcast. Um, we have taken a short break to do all sorts of things that life throws at you. But um, we're back with uh, what we think is a very exciting uh, lineup for season three. Um, but we'll keep most of that under our hat because, well, we haven't finalised a lot of it yet. However, uh, this is the first episode and it is a chat with the guys from Errant Media, Sean Ormsby and Stephen McLaren. And we headed through to Leith to talk to them. And, well, it's a chat about music, basically, and why they feel, I suppose, compelled to make their own music and, and, and put it out on the label uh, Ernt Media. The two have been uh, collaborating, um, or at least uh, working together, uh, for a long time. Um, first, when Sean had Pern Whale, uh, another um, record label, and released music under the name Night Noise Team, and um, Stephen was releasing music under the name Collar Up. Since then, uh, they worked together on a very interesting project called Shards, which you'll hear us talk about, as well as their own solo stuff, um, Stephen under his own name, and Sean under the name Errant Boy. And as you'll hear, that's an album which um, gets its release uh, this Friday the 22nd um, but between them uh, the two have made some of my favourite music of the last few years so it was a real pleasure to catch up with them and uh, be able to talk about it um, we talk influences um, we could have had a longer chat on the Divine Comedy I think but you'll also get to hear a couple of tracks from the Ernt Boy album A Wayward Mirror as well as a Shards track. But enough from me. Um, here's the first podcast of season three, and we hope you enjoy it. Cheers. <laughs>
And welcome to the latest Scotch Way Hay podcast. And we're through in Edinburgh to talk to the guys from Ernt Media, um, Sean Ormsby. Hello, Sean. Hiya, how are you doing, Alistair? I'm good, I'm good. And Stephen McLaren, hey, Stephen. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. Um, I first, well, actually, not long after Scotch Way started, I think um, I heard from Collar Up and Night Noise team, which I think were two of the earlier bands that you guys were involved in and um, this is now kind of think growing into Ernt Media so tell us a bit about Ernt Media. Well initially um, when we contacted you at first the label was Perm Whale Recordings and there was a way of self-releasing stuff by Night Noise team and also Flues, my musical partner at that point Mm Fabian, that's what we were working on. And then we widened things out a little bit. We met Stephen and his band Color Up. Thought they were fantastic. Nobody else was doing anything like that mm-hmm. um, in the UK, let alone Scotland. That's what we felt. Um, so we we decided we would release Color Up's second album. Right. Fabian produced that along with Stephen. Unfortunately, um, Fabian's no longer on the scene. Uh-huh. So Permwheel has has really wound up along with Night Noise team. Right, okay. Um, yes, I would say it was a, a, a permanent hiatus, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on at the minute, um, but I was very keen to get something else on the go, mm-hmm. plenty more music I wanted to release, songs that I'd written, so I thought, I'd, I dreamt up Errant Media, and um, I've started to release music by Errant Boy on mm-hmm. that, which is the current band that I'm working with. Yeah. I also wanted to get Stephen involved because of his energy and his judgment and his abilities and all these things. And it's much better to do these things uh, as a partnership. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I feel we started an, a melancholitronic project called Shards, yeah, which is what we, we do. Um, we we release tracks, um, individual tracks. That's yeah. us. <laughs> we're we're currently working on the fourth one. Yeah. We're not really thinking in terms of an album, yeah, or anything. Um, if we think it's good enough it's really good to our ears we'll put it out um, yeah. so at the minute uh, Errant Media is, is, is a platform or, or a source for, for releasing Shards and Errant Boy right it may open out in the future okay that's up for discussion yeah um, very different uh, Errant Boy and Shards are, are very different types of music so maybe say a little bit about Shards first mm-hmm. Um well, Erin Boy is as as Sean, Sean's uh, songs, and uh, so it's his band, and I'm not in that band. Mm-hmm. Um, but Charles is is very much fifty fifty between Sean and I, with uh, in terms of the creative input to it. We never release, we never put anything out that's just been one or the other. It's yeah. got we've got to both be involved in it. So um, we started with the first tune uh, just to get something started, uh, and we put that out last year. And, um, we thought it was great, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and we, <laughs> but we wanted to we kind of wanted to see what other people thought it, as well, of mm-hmm. course, as you always do. So, uh, so we're bringing out the fourth tune. All three tunes have been quite well received, we yeah. think, anyway, and um, and, um, and and we're bringing out this fourth one in June. It's called uh, "If You Wait." And uh, we're very excited about it. Um, 
Could you say about the, the style of the music? Because it's it's kind yeah. of electronic. It's kind of lo-fi. Is that fair? Yeah. I would say lo-fi to an extent. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's based on a kind of mournful feeling. Yeah. A melancholy. Long. Um, I would say, I've thought about the word dirge, but I, I in a positive. I, mean, I that's not yeah. fair. In a positive sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, um, like a technical sense. Funereal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not. It's um, not deliberately yeah. lo-fi. That's yeah. What I'm saying. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not deliberately yes. lo-fi. It's um, it's lo-fi in the sense that we do it ourselves. I think that's yeah. about as lo-fi as it is. We're not deliberately trying to be lo-fi. But the, the production. DIY yeah. ethos. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's recorded yeah. at home, uh, mixed at home, um, and a lot of it is. I suppose based on harmonies, vocal harmonies mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So the music's quite minimalist and the, the vocals come up centre. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what it's pop songs. Yeah. Uh, but using a lot of elect- electronic instruments and effects as well. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's what that. And uh, Ernt Boy, you've got an album. Got an album out. coming out. It's funny you should say that. Also, yeah, next <laughs> next next Friday, we've got, we've got our debut album coming out, A yeah. Wayward Mirror, um, and that'll be a, a digital only release. Sure. Um, just to keep us, you know, quick on our toes, keep us nimble. It would be digital only. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get lumbered with boxes of, of vinyl or anything like that <laughs> in the living room. Um, do you want me to say a little bit about? Yeah, absolutely. That? Yeah. I'd say th- um, that album. Is like a auto biopic. That's that's the way I would say it. Okay. So some of those songs have been the gestation has been maybe 20, 25 years. Wow. Okay. For some of them, and they've evolved over that time. And have you ever released them in other forms? Because obviously you've been in other bands. No. No. These no. Have, they've oh. been they've been bubbling away, waiting for the right um, the right sort of platform. I would say, which is really like a melodic guitar driven pop music. Um, which is different from there was elements of that with Night Noise Team, yeah. But there was also other elements involved with Night Noise Team. So this is really, I'd say, it's autobiographical, but the, I don't think the narrator is particularly reliable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence the way we're. In fact, I know the, <laughs> the narrators. Hence the Wayward Mirror. That's it's part of what the Wayward Mirror is. Right. From my point of view, um, it's nice to be able to. Uh, promote promote our point of stuff to people that you know or, or talk about an album that you haven't actually been involved in yeah. like creatively and really talk about it in glowing terms this is a superb album yeah. it really is um, I've not been involved in it at all creatively or otherwise and it's excellent it yeah really is. I have to say from what I've heard of it I agree with that um, thanks very much one of the reasons I'm here <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. Thank <laughs> but you. um it, it's interesting that it's sort of biographical is that musically as well I mean it seems there's a lot of influences there yes I would say so not they're not deliberate yeah it's not deliberate I think with influences sometimes you can take on board something you've heard and almost some people can base a whole career in three minutes of, <laughs> of somebody else's music yeah. you know I, I wouldn't name any names but um, <laughs> that, that's possible and good luck to those folk I think you you take on the influences, and other people are easy, you know can spot them yeah. far more easily. And sometimes you can go, yeah, "That's a fair point." Yeah. Or oh, rumbled. <laughs> <laughs> or I've no, you, you, yeah. Or you can be more wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, another, yeah. is another thing. But also, you can. I mean, for example, because you're based in Scotland, people can they can veer towards comparing your stuff with Scottish stuff. Yeah, which seems to be a little bit of a cul-de-sac. Yes, personally. Yeah, as I'm not Scottish, but I am. I didn't grow up in Scotland, um, so you would be compared to certain very seminal Scottish bands. Yeah, it seems an odd, yeah. an you, odd fit. Did you make music uh, <laughs> when you were in Ireland? And if so, I, I didn't know. No, I, I I was thinking about. I was getting to the point where I was writing songs uh-huh. at that point, um, but I didn't release them for a long, long time. I was just interested if the same thing happened there, where other bands were, you know, compared to other Irish bands rather than anything. Well, at the time I was growing up, the the scene was barren, <laughs> somewhat barren. Yeah, really. So there were some key players. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just the people that you know, really. Yeah. And even those people didn't, you know, those key players didn't live necessarily in Belfast or Dublin. Yeah. You know, at that point, you're talking mm-hmm. about your Van Morrison, 
you know, people like that. Mm-hmm. It was only in the nineties and later with people like Therapy and Ash. Yeah. And those were really key bands to prove to people a divine comedy as well. Yeah. That you could come from there and, and you could get your music out to the world. And those were really, really key things. But um in retrospect I would say Divine Comedy has been a big influence. Yeah, sure. Um but I would hope not in a parochial kind of way. No. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I think the thing with shards is, when I first heard the uh, first couple of tracks, I couldn't hear anything that sounded like it before. <laughs> that was the opposite. I mean, was that a deliberate thing, or was that just the way that it, it That's worked? That's a massive compliment. It start. is. I mean, we, absolutely, right. yeah. That came, it came from nowhere, really. And the fact, if, if you're collaborating with somebody, the, um, it's like a Venn diagram, really. You know, it's the bit in the middle where right. you, that you share. Yeah. So... That's the bit that interested both of us, yeah. and for it to sound so satisfying yeah. to both of us and to some other folk that have yeah. responded. I've always, I've and always been quite an, uh, influenced by kind of dreamy sounds, and uh, I was quite into happy hardcore when I was, when I was younger, <laughs> and um, so the kind of euphoria type of uh-huh. euphoric sorry type of sound is, is it, it kind of grabs me, um, so. There's a bit of a crossover between a lot. Of, I mean, even there's a crossover between shards and, and color up in that respect. There's mm-hmm. kind of a lot of echo. There's a lot of kind of ghostly noises and and, and unintended noises as well. And that, that have come from the experimentation process. Mm-hmm. We've gone right. like that. Sounds good. We better we better save this mix so that yeah, yeah. so that we don't lose it. You know that kind of way. So um, often the best stuff is the stuff that happens accidentally when you're doing um, other things. As that's right. I can mm-hmm. yeah. Um, a, a melody that somebody else comes up with can suggest a harmony yeah. that you wouldn't have come up with yourself. The shards to me as, as well. It's it's a great discipline because it's very deliberately not guitar music. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, very deliberately. Yeah. I might hear a guitar line. But it's not an issue with shards. Or, yeah. or, or piano, for that matter. I mean, there's, yeah. uh, there hasn't been. Well, there's been. You have used piano, but it certainly hasn't been uh, the the main instrument. Whereas, obviously, for me, uh, as we call it up and as a solo artist, it is. You know, the main instrument yeah. because that's what I play. But it's not. It's not the main. It's never been the main sound for shards, and no, probably no, won't no. be. You know. No, so. not at all. No. It's interesting. You know, you mentioned the word melancholy, and you mm-hmm. mentioned the word euphoria, and I think <laughs> actually, <laughs> when you put them together, there, there is that in, in, in your music and, yes. and in the previous music as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. You can both be one can follow the other. Very, yeah, very quickly. You know, <laughs> and on it goes. And it helps them <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think it helps right, the, yeah. The, the, the other two. Up. You're talking about Saturday night, Sunday morning. Sunday. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit. You know, she spoke about divine comedy, but other mm-hmm. kind of influence that you've had, if you don't mind. And I know some people don't particularly want to talk about influences, but no, I mean, to me, some Irish bands I would say that I particularly like Pony Club, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. band from about two thousand onwards, very talented yeah. Dublin songwriter called Mark Cullen. Right, it's been shamefully overlooked. Yeah, um, yeah, it's great. I, you know, I'd, I'd urge people to to check them out, um, and also of late villagers, as somebody um, Conor O'Brien, somebody I've seen live maybe four or five times. Right. I know you've seen him. Yeah, I mean, going to get back to Pony Club, I know you almost prefer Pony Club to Divine Comedy. To be honest, yeah, I mean, that, right. that 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 much, yeah, like superb uh, stuff. And I villagers as well. I went to see. Villagers in Galway just mm-hmm. in uh, end of January there. It was excellent, you know. Yeah. We've seen them as well at Liquid Rooms, haven't we, a few years back. That's too. right, yeah. yeah. They're con- consistent. consistently good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. great. A bit interesting. You, you can tell that the guy's in love with words yeah. and yeah. the words are as important as the melody yeah. to him. And that's it's quite a, r- a rarity to my ears. Uh, absolutely. These, these days, it's not just a, you know, a line that will fit. Yeah. Metri- you know words that will metrically fit it's a proper song the line you know? yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely I'm trying to think of um, somebody else I've seen recently it was Malcolm Ross yeah um, and I've been getting into Joseph K yeah. belatedly uh-huh. I have to say um, obviously a massive Edinburgh band very very important um, well. you know you said that uh, 
there could be you can be driven down a cul-de-sac by being compared to other Scottish bands. Yes, I think that's very true. Yes, um, and and such comparisons often mean absolutely nothing if, yes. if you're just concentrating on geography. Yes. However, I'm going to say, what's Edinburgh like as a kind of a musical? Ed- scene Ed- well, thing? Edinburgh to me, young fathers mm-hmm. are so far out in their own in Edinburgh, but they're not actually. I think to me, very very importantly, they're not part of Edinburgh scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they looked, from what I gather, they looked around and thought, we're not appreciated. Yeah, and they did yeah. their own thing. Um, so it seemed that's to work a, out all right for them. It worked out brilliantly, <laughs> but they're, you know, they, they've hit their purple patch. Yeah. And I hope it lasts for a long time. I hope to see them in the festival this year. Yeah. You know, they're playing. Um, it's, it's something unique. The sound is unique, and that's something that, you know, to strive for. Definitely. Uh, ambitious, and y- you wonder where it comes from. Yeah, it's superb I'm stuff. It, I'm glad it exists. <laughs> yeah, it's superb stuff. And I, I, I kind of like the way they come across as well, like in articles and that. I, I agree with a lot of things that what they say. Um, yeah, I saw them when um, uh, Noi Riki took a gig through in Glasgow. Yes. And I'd never heard of them before. Mm-hmm. And I went to see other things that were on. Yeah. And then at the tiny venue at the Poetry Club there in SWG3. Yeah, right. suddenly these guys were in your face. I, mean, I haven't seen energy like that since probably Asian Dub no. Foundation. That kind of yes. full on in your face stuff. It, it really kind of comes across in absolutely. the recordings as well, which, which is really is kind difficult. Of rare. Yeah, yes. it's quite hard to do that. Um, both albums absolutely superb. Yeah. And I thought like the second one coming out it was so soon after the first. Mm-hmm. Thought, man, are they, are they going to have enough ideas to keep it? Totally surpassed it in my view. I thought yeah. it was better yeah. actually than the first, and I liked the first a lot. So yeah, so I mean. More more generally, yeah. the Edinburgh scene. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel part of a scene. Yeah, I don't I, think I, scenes I, are terrible. Work, yeah. don't it? I mean, it's the same. There's no. so, such eclectic music out there, and yeah. But then, when you have charts like this, you kind of yes. think, well, you'll probably bump into the bands that are maybe yeah. in the area, or or were you guys making, you know, putting out your own records? Maybe well, we're, people we're do the to, same. We're hoping to. We're hoping to start something like as well with our own thing. Yeah, we're, we're going to be putting on. Oh, well, we've got a night coming up and uh, we've got the Iron Boy album yes. launch next Saturday and then on June the 11th, Saturday June the 11th we've got a first uh, night as well, it's going to be part of a, a bi-monthly thing so every second oh, month excellent. we're going to do a gig at the, we're going to put on a night at the uh, Leith Depot so we're hoping to base something around that venue, it's an excellent venue, it's just newly opened and um we're kind of hoping to build something from there. We can maybe have people come across from other places and play, and hopefully build something from that. Maybe we can go and do the same thing elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And maybe create our own wee thing. Yeah. Call it a scene. That's, that, that's hard, no, hard no. to call it a scene. It's no, just, it's true. I think. You know I, mean? I think the important thing is that we're, we're compelled to do it. We're still compelled to make music. Yeah. And yeah. Put it out, and try to just get something good going. Mm-hmm. And for as, as long as that energy's there, yeah. There's a lot of optimism around. And, yeah, um, that's a good feeling. People are turning out to see us, you know. And yeah. that's the thing, and you get feedback from people, but positive, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> not a negative feedback. I wouldn't say it to your face. Um, <laughs> wouldn't say it to your face. <laughs> like, exactly. well, people are turning out time after time to see us, and yeah. um, that's 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 what I suppose it keeps you on as well. That's uh, right, you need yeah. that too. So we're hoping to try and get that energy base it in a venue that we think is manageable for us and, and they're, they're really friendly folk over there yeah, as well the right, yeah. Depot guys really go ahead and wants people to do their thing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, it's just about the right size as well and uh, we're hoping to build a, a night there and keep it going so you definitely get the night on the 16th and then you're hoping to kind of take it it's the um, we've got the Veron Boy album launch next Saturday. Twenty third, twenty third of yeah. April, yeah. And then the night on the Saturday, the eleventh. Yeah. Oh. So we've definitely got that. That's that's happening, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so you've got in media as a record label to put out your own stuff. Yes. Have you thought of expanding that to take on anyone else, or is that? A We're, well, I mean, Stephen's solo stuff. Yeah. Um, when he's when he's ready, he'll uh, when he yeah. has has his tunes together and yeah. records them. We're putting that like, out. I've been. Uh, I'm doing gigs a lot, right. uh, so I'm playing quite a lot. But um, and I'm writing new stuff, and I'm still doing some color options in the gigs as well. But right. I'm, I'm obviously writing them new new things too. Uh, and is this as Stephen McLaren? Oh, Stephen yeah. McLaren, yeah. I'm going on uh, the one name, and um, 
yeah, it was just it'll just be a case of getting them recorded. To be honest with you, I've got quite a few new tunes, and we'll just get them recorded, and then we'll put them out on Edit Media as well. Um, in terms of releasing other people's stuff, I don't really know. We've not really had that chat. No, <laughs> that's that's something we we'll have to think about. Aye. So it is. There's a lot of input. Yeah. And a lot of work. Uh, yeah. Well, you must here. have done it before. I, I presume when it was Penwell. Yeah, I did. I learned an awful lot. Not yeah. to um, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I learned to be very selective. No, I'd, um, yeah, just the focus of time mm-hmm. and, and again energy. So um, you just want to maximise your impact, really. Yeah. That's it. So I wouldn't want to diversify too much and then you lose the the focus of what you're trying to do but there's other folk we have a very talented um, friend in Glasgow filmmaker Jordan Yorkston who's going to do a video for the Shards release Um, get some good videos together we're going to develop a website and try to get a a place where people can go and see all this so there are other collaborations going on as well Um, in terms of just you don't want to advertise yourself, and then people start firing in demos, sure. you know, yeah. which happened to me before. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, your inbox yeah. must be <laughs> full of stuff. Yes, yeah, full of stuff. So it's why we're only doing the night every two months as well, because we want to make it a good night every yeah. two months rather than doing a night. Every Just have to look for someone to fill yeah. a space. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. we're wanting to invite folks that we think will put on a good show. I think I know. I, I, you know, spoke to a few people who have small record labels, but they tend not to be making the music. They're that they're concentrating on putting it out, mm-hmm. which is a different thing. I think yes. when you're doing that, yeah. and if you were asked to, as you say, look through yeah. the inbox and fire out other people's CDs, it would probably be. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. yeah. Um, is there anyone else in? in, in I spoke about young fathers, but mm-hmm. anyone else in Scotland at the moment that you're particularly interested in? Well, it's funny. I mean, this year for me, it's the some of the not veteran, but <laughs> some of the, the the you know the the lifers have, have impressed me. <laughs> De Rosa's album, yeah. I thought yeah. was something special, mm. and it is something special. Um, personally, I thought Emma Pollock album was outstanding. I do. It, was, it seemed like yeah. a long time coming, and then it was worth it was worth the wait those are two that really stand out I think they'll stand the test of time yeah as well just the quality of the songwriting it comes down to mm. for me I mentioned Young Fathers already and uh, De Rosa as well I mean I've been a long time fan of De Rosa and his solo project when he did that I don't know if he's ever going to go back to that I'm not sure but uh, I th- thought it was excellent uh, Twilight Sad album last year I thought it was Fantastic, you know. I really like that, and I've always been a fan of them as well. Um, well, uh, I mean, the, the we've spoken before on the on the podcast about the Scottish Album of the Year award and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. But I think last year the long list in particular showed the kind of breadth of stuff that's out there at the moment and some quite a uh, uh, experimental stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Is that the kind of thing that? Interest you don't do obviously nobody didn't make music for that kind of thing but is it you think it's a detrimental to making music at all if people are looking at the album list yeah yeah album list oh, the album album the I think if if you put in so much effort to try to get your music out I yeah think somebody would be disingenuous to say that um, that they're not interested in music as a competition yeah. I, th- I think. Uh, I personally, I'd love Aaron Major stuff to be on the long list or yeah. even considered. You know, we, we would put stuff in. I think it's the end of March this year, so yeah. it'll be next year's the Aaron Boy album. It's nice uh, to get recognition. You know, sure. I, I mean, I think the way it, it seemed to take someone like Aaron Hubbard to a wider audience yeah. as well. You that's, know, that's to me, right. it was only a good thing. But yeah, no, no, absolutely, I totally agree. I think your initial impact in terms of reviews is the key thing, mm-hmm. so that when people remember what they liked during the year. You know, that's, that seems to be the, the important thing. So that's a, that's a really important time for the album, I think, around the launch. Yeah. And then that, the knock-on effect. And then, yeah, and how that manages yeah. to keep yeah. on going. How do you... <laughs> when, when, when so much stuff is... Uh, <laughs> the busiest of marketplaces, let's put it that way, how do you try and uh, you understand it? I mean, I, I think that the... The idea behind Shards just putting out a song rather than going through the whole, well, this is the single, this is the album and all that stuff is really interesting because mm-hmm. it makes each release an event in itself, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, how, how do you kind of try and, and get out there? Well, some people say you go out and tour, you, you, know, you, yeah. play, you play every week. Yeah. Um, 
you have some kind of maybe really interesting backstory, which is maybe overshadows the, the actual <laughs> music, music, music occasionally. Itself, right. I don't want to sound cynical here. No, but, no. Um, <laughs> um, I think just to me, it's just the quality of the work. If you really believe in what you're doing, and also are the songs good enough? And this is really song based stuff that I'm dealing yeah, with personally. Yeah. Sure. You know, it's not it's not really soundscapes or you know, so yeah. is, is the song good enough? Um, and if you believe it is, you're hoping that will speak I think, uh, volumes. I think we're both uh, we're both in the same uh, in the same wavelength there, and we both really enjoy good songs. Mm-hmm. Right? Song songwriting as a as a as a thing in itself, and uh, we'd rather not go down the angle just being a gimmick. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With any other music, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest, I, I think if you. I've always thought, as when I've been writing anything, that if 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 you don't believe in it, like if if you don't think it's it's good, like really good, then just forget about it. Just, no. just leave it, put it aside. You know. Nearly everyone point. we've spoken to who's been involved in making music or releasing music, they it's like a compulsion. <laughs> it's like they can't not do it, and they would do it if nobody was reviewing it or listening to it. Right. Um, and a, it just so happens that that seems to be the best music to me mm-hmm. that's the stuff that really connects I think and, and, yeah. and people don't just you know say that was a that was interesting move on to the next thing they go mm-hmm. back to it again and again mm-hmm. um, you spoke about DeRosa and you said you might or today when we're recording this is record store day yes, yes. and uh, you might try and catch some uh, this afternoon um, record store day is another thing which I think had the best of intentions when it started it was um, a small independent record shops as they were mm-hmm. and looking to uh, promote themselves for at least one day and, and get mm-hmm. people through the doors that maybe didn't at other times mm-hmm. it's now become fairly huge yes that's true. I mean what are your thoughts on it in general I think there's a little bit of a buzz today it's nice yeah. that the idea you could, uh, we'd be going heading down to Stockbridge and watching some bands for free and hopefully you know send some good music a celebration yeah. really of Scottish music yeah mm-hmm. um, in terms of the commercial side of it you know, we don't we don't need the Elvis picture disc. No. We don't necessarily need the you know the coloured Queen vinyl or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, you know, it's, it's like yeah, I suppose there's good things and bad things about it. I don't really have much strong feelings either way on it. Mm. But then I've heard uh, I think it was uh, one of the guys at Mono saying that day can keep them going for the rest ah, of the year. Well, and that in itself has got to be a good uh, thing. So. Yeah, I mean speaking as a punter, yeah, I didn't quite appreciate that. Yeah, I, d- I don't quite appreciate that. So that's yeah. Well, that's significant then. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know if that keeps mono um, and, and and business. That's great. That's, <laughs> that's right. super, it's yeah, worth yeah, the whole day. Absolutely. In yeah, yeah. Totally. That's true. Um, yeah. But I do think you know when you start to see what's on offer in terms of mm-hmm. you know a uh, hundred limited editions of as you say maybe a queen piece of uh, gold yeah. vinyl yeah, and yeah. you think well they could have bought out ten thousand of these if they really wanted to get it. To no, people. I know, I know. Yeah. That's that, you know. A point with that, uh, and I think the live music <laughs> side of the day actually has maybe even become as important, well, certainly as important as mm-hmm. the idea of going and buying records or going. Yeah, and people have got CDs. something to latch on to, you know. They've got this, yeah. this right record day, uh, record store day. You can, right, let's let's go along to this and have a bit of a good time, you know. I suppose that's well, it is really yeah. the day for punters at least, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so after record lunches and a uh, nights. Have you got other plans for what's going to happen next, or are you not even thinking that far? Well, that'll take us through to midsummer, mm. and then we'll start to think about getting another shards tune together, which is it's a slow process. Um, mm, but we've done it for four in a year, which is yeah. pretty spectacular considering our working methods. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, we can't slow. complain. Um, yeah. I suppose if you your own record label, then you're never going. Where's the single? Where's the? And there's no advance to pay back. That's <laughs> right. I'm hoping, get, I'm hoping to get maybe one or two singles out before the end of the year as well, and on the morning. So what kind of stuff, stuff is your sort of stuff? Uh, <laughs> uh, people hate this. Don't ask stuff. me. To uh, no, it, well, it'll, it'll, it's just songs at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the songs um, written on the piano, and. Uh, and uh, I use a lot of uh, reverb and voice, uh, so it's like a stream pop is what it is, right. I suppose. Um, but as to how the recordings will end up sounding, that's that's the question that I can't mm-hmm. really answer yet. I guess I've not not started recording yet. 
and I, I'll have a lot of, I'll have a lot of agency over how that yeah well I'll have all of the agency over how that comes <laughs> out so it, but it all down to what I think oh that sounds quite good you know at the time um, so, for both of you you know talk about working methods are you good at saying that's that's now done <laughs> let it go or are you kind of going I, keeping a hold on it till per- very good for each other <laughs> personally I personally I know when when it's done yeah, <laughs> stick I'm, a fork I'm, in it I know when it's done I'm not I, I, we will, I'm, I'm not that great at that to be honest I, I've been uh, really bad at uh, kind of taking a mix so I'm quite happy and going oh that's I think that could be better and then the, the next mix that comes off that it, well, I didn't like that as much as the last one trying <laughs> frantically to get it back to where it was before and like even just a couple of weeks ago just finishing if you wait the new Charles tune um, I'd say ask Sean to come up quite you know <laughs> late on at night so, Sean you're going to need to come up here because <laughs> I can't I've been at this for 10 hours you're losing your mind I was losing my mind I was mm. like sitting there can't kind of spiral into that I was, you know, this was totally yeah. crazy you know, like, sitting uh, there from 8 in the morning to like 8 o'clock at night with a tune that's basically been finished for the last yeah. 2 weeks or whatever and going <laughs> I've made no progress and it was quite it was, quite, it was actually it's pretty depressing you know what I mean like, yeah. <laughs> you're happy about it now yeah. I'm happy about it now just, right? so it seems yeah. like it was all worth it now but at the time I was saying no, that's, that's fresh pair of years so that's what it is I remember uh, reading an interview with uh, Lee Mavers from the Laz and um, who I don't think was the most level headed of chaps at the best of times <laughs> but you know he just seemed he couldn't let you know the idea of coming up with a follow up to the yes. uh, he could not do it he yes. could not let them go and even one point says that it's the wrong dust. I need old dust <laughs> on my keyboard. Sixties <laughs> dust. He's a man of integrity. He's a man but, of integrity. But we're still waiting for the second album. I think and the rest of the band will go and come on. I think that it's basically like the shards, uh, shards stuff it because it's a lot. It doesn't sound very clean. Yeah. You know, it's quite there, there'll be. It's quite hard to. You don't really know what you're you're wanting until you you've got it. Right, and then you're never gonna like. It's gonna be really hard to recreate that. So you've got to just capture that. You've got to look like that's it. And and Stephen, you just you can go away. Step away from it. Step away from the microphone. Get away from it, Stephen. Yeah. Nowadays, obviously, you can record um, as we're doing here, sitting on a, on a Mac. Yeah. But um, how do you record your stuff? Aaron Boy album was done in separate parts which were all sent to me and then I tried to put them together I was learning how to edit music mix with that album it's my first real attempt at that so when you say separate parts you mean the, the different instruments and um, yeah yeah so bass was sent to me um, drum parts were recorded <laughs> in a studio right and sent to me and then and guitar parts as well so, oh, wow. and then I, d- I did all the vocals myself and harmonies uh, were you there when any of the other stuff was being recorded um, no some of the guitar parts I was there but mm-hmm. the rest was pretty much so some of it's heavily edited Yeah. and some of it's just as was sent to me that's and really just, interesting and, right. and some of it mutated as, as I was mixing it I realised that other things had to go in you know, with little harmonies and the counter melodies that kind of thing so is that then a lot of music that you're editing down editing down and editing down it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've, you, but you've got it up on the computer like yourself, yeah. And you're just, um, yeah, you're you're distilling it, I think, really. And a lot, a lot of that is about getting it down to some sort of kind of essence. Mm-hmm. And how do you record the shards? Well, a lot of different ways. I, I, I use Logic in, the, in the Mac program, but um, we'll get my USB keyboard. Use that for a lot of stuff. Uh, um, just electronic drums with from within like the uh, logic program mm-hmm. just just to do it for the USB keyboard and get it, stuff like that and then we record using a USB microphone so that is mm-hmm. mainly that is mainly on the, the laptop in terms of like the actual recording process but no. but in terms of the writing it's it's probably not you know what I mean you're not sitting there on a laptop like writing the song if you, so yeah no so I mean it's basic it's usually a track that Steve will send me aye chord so changes and a basic, like a basic track and then I will come up with a vocal melody and words yeah oh, okay and then I'll put that on in a demo form and then we'll go back to it and work on the arrangement right. so it's collaboration but it's sending stuff and then maybe send it back and is it that yeah I'll get together to listen to it and then yeah. when we're when we're doing the recording of the vocals like 
Sean, all the tunes we've done so far, Sean's been the lead vocal on it. Um, not particularly as a rule, it's just it's just no, it's, the way it's going. Yeah. Uh, and then I've I've done all, um, most of the backing vocals because uh, <laughs> I'm here to sing like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just can't read. Don't give away your secrets here. I, I, I can't read those heights. <laughs> right, yeah, I, can, I, I can go quite high on my falsetto and stuff like that. So it, it's mm. so we've been able to we've been able to. Um, get together and do that that's been that's part of the creative process as well because things have come to us as well like the wee piano thing at the end of one of the tunes I can't remember which one it was Sad Sayonara Sad Sayonara yeah. Goodbye yeah, yeah. Um, we work fast we work really fast because we do what we want yeah that's good yeah, so yeah, therefore yeah. it's not yeah. like when you actually add up even though there's a lot, maybe a few months to do a tune when you actually add up the hours they've gone in it's not you know, yeah, it could be ten hours or twenty yeah, hours yeah, over tunes. Not, it's not really that much because you know exactly what you're after. Yeah. Do you feel when you're in a collaboration that you've got some kind of responsibility to the other person to say, well, we've got to get this finished for the sake of? Oh, when yeah. it's your own stuff, maybe you know, as you were saying, you can maybe spiral down thinking <laughs> I need to fix that one note or whatever, but it's your stuff, so you can take, you know. In theory, you can take as long as you like doing it. I will. I mean, we do. You know, we take we do take quite a while over it as well. And uh, not, but not deliberately. Yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just you know, whenever it's finished, it's finished, or whenever, <laughs> whenever it can be agreed that it's finished, it's yeah. finished. At least, I mean, I think there has got to be a point where you've got to go. Look, at, we can't spend any more time on this tune. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's just we're going to end up. No, making any more tunes, you know, we have to we have to give our energy to something else. Um, but I, I mean, in terms of like how long you can take over it, if you're not using a um, recording studio, if you're using your own equipment, uh, you can take as long as you like over it because you don't you're not kind of worried about that. That's not to say we would never use a recording studio, right? Mm-hmm. Now, because mm-hmm. we would. But okay. um, uh, I think I think with Iron Boy, I had more of a plan in terms of release. Yeah. So I, I got certain tunes ready along the way to release them as um, trailers for the album yeah. you know like three or four so I had I had that target the hit personal target so I got things together it was, it was more focused in that way you know I'd, I definitely had a, a kind of um, a schedule in my head so you're saying these songs have been with you some of them for 20 15, well 20 years. like the first line could have been written or the melody yeah, yeah. and then they just yeah and um, did you always know how the music was going to sound or is that Coming. No, I knew it would be raw than yeah. something like Night Noise. Team. Yeah, it would be raw. It would be direct, um, and it would be to to me. It would be DIY. It would have that feeling about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it wouldn't be glossy. It wouldn't be sterile, and like a sterile modern rock song. And it wouldn't be glossy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, we'll come back to Night Noise team who I. That was a fan of, yes, as you know, and uh, I mean that was that was more say polished than the stuff of it. Yes, yeah. Um, but that was part of what made it what it was. I think you know it certainly yeah. wasn't sterile. No, uh, I think it was there were techniques being used there that came from dance music. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the um, Fabian was mixing that and, and producing a lot of it. So, and he was very experienced. He had mm-hmm. fifteen twenty years maybe experience. Of mixing and, and recording music, so it had a different slant to it. Yeah, to me it was like a a Daft Punk. Yeah, you know, like a, but you know maybe a, a more down market Daft Punk, <laughs> or or maybe like Sinetti and yeah, but without Sarah Crackle up front. Yeah, you know, it's the two guys at the back. Pop <laughs> music sensibilities. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, uh, was yeah. A, it was a it kamikaze was. mission because you know it was it was aimed at the mainstream. Yeah, but there was never real any real chance to that because it was. Um, self-released and DIY. Yeah, but it was like a beautiful kamikaze mission. It was a beautiful, a, 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 be, a beautiful failure. You know, uh, something the other <laughs> great things. Beautiful failures are great things. Yes. Um, 
Well, I think we'll probably leave it there and let you guys head off down to see De Rose. I don't know what time they're Sound. on. Ah, two o'clock. So uh, thanks very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Also. And thanks for all your support. By the no way. problem at yeah, all. You know, thanks. I'm a big fan of both your work and okay. I'm looking forward to hearing the solo album. So get it. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> <laughs> get it done. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny You've said this <laughs> live. <laughs> yes, yeah. I look forward to hearing the Evan album as a whole. Can't wait for that. Um, so we'll be back soon with uh, new people on our next podcast. See you then. Cheers. The repeal of the church bells hits the ground And nestles out the back of a bungalow where the turf and the stepfather are blowing smoke rings through hard weather. A mother watches her own smoke clear at 16 bucks in a wayward mirror on someone else's kitchen wall. She walks outside, her steps are basted by the sun. Feel like, Feel like there's somewhere I have to be. That I don't have the time The decades hover, the decades fuss Like helicopters, the decades buzz us My little sister is counting beats I can count to 29, do you wanna hear me? Feel like there's somewhere I have to be Realize that I don't have the time Feel like there's somewhere I have to be Realize that I don't have the time From a Sergio Leone tribe Diagonal this Card your furious coin that could cover any one of our eyes. Cover the sun, it could cover the moon. I swing to a parallel and walk on by. I feel like there's somewhere I had to be. I realize that I don't have the time. I feel like there's somewhere I had to be. I